was Amelia Earhart, Chapter 4, Amelia Takes Off. With her pilot's license in hand, Amelia flew in some air shows. Most pilots were men, so a young woman attracted a lot of attention. Amelia didn't like to be on display. She worked in the shows to earn money. She had to keep on flying. Then as Amelia's friend and teacher, Neat. Nita Snook got married. Just as Amelia feared, her friend's flying days were over. Nita would now be a wife and mother, so Amelia needed another instructor. She teamed up with an expert named Mont Montejo. Monty had flown in the army. He also did stunt work flying in the movies. Monty taught Amelia a lot. She even learned to do tricks in the air like a huge upside down loops. Now she felt like trying for the fly for a flying record. Amelia wanted to see how high she could go. Amelia didn't tell anyone her plan. She had an instrument put in the plane. She, it measured how high above ground the plane was. In the early 1920s, planes didn't fly as high as they do today. One reason was the cockpits were open and at high altitude, there's not much oxygen to breathe. Amelia knew she could pass out if she went too high, but she was willing to risk it. There's some of the loops that she learned how to do. It took two attempts. Amelia flew through fog and sleet. She finally made it to 14,000 feet, more than, 200, two, more than two and a half miles high. Then her plane engines began to fail. Amelia brought her plane down fast. She was just barely able to make a safe landing, but she had her record. Though Amelia loved to fly, she soon found out that she couldn't support herself by just flying. There's no big, there were no big airlines or airplanes at, yet. People did not travel by plane. In fact, most people never expected to take a ride in a plane. In 1924, Amelia temporarily gave up her dream. She sold the canary and used the money to buy a car. You might guess that Amelia would pick a practical automobile like a mobile T. She didn't. She bought a fancy yellow convertible. It, if she couldn't fly in the air, she would at least have the feeling of flying across the ground. Amelia named her car the Yellow Pearl. She and her mother drove across country and headed for the East Coast. Amelia went back to Columbia University, but again, it wasn't for long. She had to drop out again, as usual. The problem was money. Sam Chapman followed Amelia out East. He proposed marriage again. It was tempting. Amelia was now 28 years old. Most people thought women... This age, we're old maids. If Amelia married Sam, she wouldn't have to worry so much about money. However, Sam would want her to stay at home and have children. Amelia had to decide. To her, the choice was clear. Amelia told her sister, Muriel, of her decision. I don't want to marry him, Amelia said. I don't want to marry anyone. Amelia couldn't stand the thought of giving up her freedom. The next job Amelia found was in Boston. She worked at the Denison House, where she took care of poor children. Amelia really liked the job. She knew she was doing something worthwhile. Worthwhile Flying was now limited to the weekends, but she watched the other pirates with interest. In 1927, a man named Charles Lindbergh made news all over the world. He was the first pilot to fly alone across the Atlantic. It took him more than 33 hours to fly from Long Island, New York, to Paris. A woman from London named Amy Guest wanted to be the first woman to fly the Atlantic. Guest was not a pilot, so she would set the record by just, being, just by being a passenger in the plane. George Putnam, a book publisher in New York, was going to oversee her attempt. However, Amy's family wouldn't let her go, so George Putnam had to find another woman, and at this time, he wanted a pilot. Here's a little thing about Charles Lingbung. 
uh, aviation here. Charles Lindbergh started out as a um, barnstormer. That was a pilot who did tricks in at early air shows in the 1920s, were called. But on May 21st, 1927, Charles left his tricks behind and entered the record book. No one had ever made a solo trip across the Atlantic before. It was a very dangerous. His plane called the Spirit of St. Louis was only 28 feet long. Lindbergh's biggest problem was staying awake. He, so he'd stick his head out of the plane's window for a blast of cold air. He also kept reminding him, himself that if he slept, he would die. Putnam ran a big public, ran a big publishing company, and so he knew a lot of people. He was good at making that deals. Putnam asked a friend to find the right woman for the trip. The friend found Amelia Earhart. 